Welcome to the shop today at Greenwood Bonsai Studios and we're going to be talking about bonsai pots today. As you can see we have a very wide range of bonsai pots. We go from just basic beginners sort of plastic bonsai pots that you can use for trees that you've got in training through to pots from China and from some of the top kilns in Japan, handmade bonsai pots, some made by bonsai potters in the UK and all sorts of range from tiny little pots this sort of size up to huge pots this sort of size and everything in between. A bit of a shout out today when I started my bonsai apprenticeship I was fortunate enough to learn from Bill Valavanis in the United States one of the founding fathers of bonsai and it's his 70th birthday today so I want to say hello to Bill and I hope you have a great day Bill. Uh, really enjoyed uh, being your apprentice and taking on the teachings that he gave me. And one of the things that Bill was really keen about was bonsai pots. And uh, we did a lot of work on how you match trees to bonsai pots to get the best out of the composition and the best out of your tree. And I've got a couple of trees in the studio today and we've got quite a, we've got quite a lot of different pots that will suit one of these trees. So I want to do a bit of evaluation and show you the difference, different styles of pots we've got the way the different glazes and the styles and the shapes correspond with the tree. So we'll go into the studio, we'll take one of these pots in with us. We'll take this one in, this might be suitable for the tree that I've got in mind. So we'll take this one into the studio and we'll have a look at the tree, okay? So back in the studio with this maple, this is quite a famous tree. This is a tree that belonged to my father. It was in his complete book of bonsai and here it is on the maple page and it was a it's a red leaf atropurpurium dissect leaf maple my father bought it from like a general store in the early 70s and it was just a young little tree not for bonsai use at all a uh, very inexpensive tree a young graft and here in the book this was photographed in like 1989 and it was always an interesting tree my father used to delight in the fact that it was it broke convention because when the trunk went up, it split into two parts and the right hand part came over to the left and the left hand part came over to the right. And you'll read in a lot of bonsai books that this is bad formation and bad structure. And although technically it is, on a practical basis with this particular tree, it worked quite well. So it used to amuse my father that it was technically wrong, but yet it was still a stunning, beautiful tree. So this photograph was a good number of years ago. Unfortunately, about 10 years ago, it blew off the bench and one side of it snapped off. So we just got one side of the tree. If you look at it now, there's a scar just here. And this scar on the trunk is where that second branch had, had come off. I've carved it away and it's callousing in and it is healing really quite well. So this will end up closing up in future. When my father first designed this tree years ago, it was quite a shallow rectangle pot, and it stayed in this pot for a number of years. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I posted on my Facebook page a photograph of this tree from here in the book with a couple of different pot options, and it had quite a big response. A lot of people talking about it and giving their comments and their opinions, you know, good and bad opinions, but it's interesting. So what we've done, to, what we're going to do today, we're going to transform that, give you a bit more detail, and try a few more pots and turn it into a video. So this is a bit of a history about the tree, and it is quite rare to see a dissectum maple grown as bonsai, a red form, and this has been a bonsai for for 50 years. So I wanted a new pot for this tree. Uh, I've spent about the last ten, eight or ten years regrowing it. It was literally just a one-sided tree. The trunk went up and there was nothing on one side. So we've grown the branches. So now we've got quite a good display of branches, a nice even canopy, and it's weeping down quite graceful. But I wanted a pot for it a few years ago and I was at the Nolander show in Belgium and I bought this very high quality Yamaki Japanese pot. And it's green and it breaks to a sort of silver on the edge really beautiful colorway very very nice it was the exact pot that i had in mind 
for this tree and I was very lucky that one of the one of the sellers at the show had got this exact pot. But if you look at the tree, the surface roots here and the surface roots here, I really did have to fight to get the tree into the pot. If this pot was half an inch smaller, it wouldn't be living, the tree wouldn't be living in it. I couldn't, I couldn't physically get the tree in. But over the last couple of years now, I think it's a little bit small for the tree. So we've got a few options. And there won't be a right or wrong answer in these pots because with bonsai being an art form, it's subjective. So some of you will like deeper pots, some might like shallower pots. Some of you, if you live in a colder climate or a warmer climate where trees dry out quick, you might pot your tree into a deeper pot to afford you uh, it not drying out quite so quickly and make it easier to care for. Some of you prefer, will prefer a more minimal aesthetic. Some of you might prefer uh, a, a fancier pot. So we just thought we'd show you a few options and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I think about those pots. And I, I don't even know if, whether I'm going to reach a decision, but I just want to give you a bit of insight into how a different pot changes the image of a tree for better or for worse. So I'm not going to repot this tree at this time of year, obviously. It's the uh, beginning of September in the UK. It's not a time for repotting maples. We're going to re do any repotting in spring. But because I know it's got quite an established root system, there's no issue with me lifting it out of the pot so we can try it in a few others. So we'll just ease it out of the pot, just carefully on the trunk, push back to leave it out of the pot. Good root system, good amount of roots, quite a solid root ball. So we can just get it and we can lift it out of there, onto here. Now that pot it was in, which was a really nice pot, beautiful pot, that is on the inside, well, on the outside it's 18 inch, 46 centimetres. So we want something a little bit bigger than that ideally. So let me pop it over here. So the first thing that came to mind was this Chinese pot, high quality Chinese, the same, very similar design to this one, but just a little bit larger. So, quite a colourful pot. And again, the colour of this pot could be too much for some trees, but don't forget, we've got bright red leaf in spring and in autumn. So here, in that blue pot, always have two of the feet forward like this usually on a pot like this. If we settle it in there and we stand back and we have a look at the tree, we can see, now it is a bit, it's probably two inches bigger than the pot it was in before. It's a little bit on the big side, potentially, but the softness, the curves of this pot really go well with the graceful movement of the tree. So the style of pot really suits the tree. Um, it's perhaps a little bit too big, but there isn't an in-between size. And knowing that the tree outgrew that pot in two years, surely this pot, it will grow into this pot over the next two to three years. So here we've got the pot in blue. But let me just get another different version of it. Just bear with me. We've got the same pot in a different colour. pot in this beautiful uh, beautiful glaze here so that's and it's paler on the on the surface in fact this pot the way this has been fired look we've got this tone here and this section but if we turn it round this is a lot cooler glaze so we've got a real warm colour here and here it's a different colour altogether this is like a mottled brown quite high glaze, whereas this is more, almost more of an olive colour round here. So that's a pot of two halves. So first view will be out the blue, same pot. Do we prefer it in that as a colour? And the second option is one option is here. The second option be there. So that darker colour. So 
So the other day when I tried this pot out, this tree out, and I put it on Facebook, I put photographs of it on in this blue pot. And the other pot we've tried it in was this. Now this, I've just recently purchased this pot and the, the glaze on it is simply stunning, but it's very, very lively. There's a lot going off. Now, for some people, this is too much, too busy. And I understand that. For some people, this sort of drum design here in a glazed pot, they don't like it. And that, that's up to them, that's fine. But I did try it in this pot because one thing with this pot is quite lively and garish. It needs a tree that can balance it. Yeah, So it needs a tree that's quite lively with some good colour. And this tree is, got, has got some good colour. So potentially, this was an option. Out of this blue, into that cream. Now, when I put that on Facebook last week, the general consensus, the majority verdict from people was that they liked this pot. And I like this pot, but potentially it's maybe a little bit too deep. Horticulturally it's fine, but visually my question is, is it a bit, is it too clunky? So bear that in mind. Now, also some people said they prefer the blue pot. Okay, so let's have a blue pot in. Paul, can you bring the blue pot in? And we've got the same pot as this in a blue. And it's not just a standard blue, it's unusual. Because it's dark blue on the base, it's lighter blue in the middle, and it's dark blue on the lip. So for those of you that like this pot in cream, just to confuse you, let's put it in blue. Do you like it more or do you like it less? And we'll lift this one out of the way. Let's try a few others. Let's try a little, slightly small, might be too small, this, this hexagonal pot. See if the tree will sit inside that. Now that's quite nice. That is nice. It's an unusual glaze. Picks up the tones in the bark quite nicely. Look at the tones in the bark here and then follow it down onto here. Now I've got this in another colour. Paul, can you get the one out of the shop? So here's the same pot with a different glaze. So for those of you that like it in this glaze, Is it better or is it worse? Lift that out of the way. I would say, personally for me, I prefer the, the pot before this because the tone matched the bark a bit nicer. I think you're either looking for something that matches or sometimes you're looking for something that contrasts. So let's take it out of there. Right. Let's have uh, let's have that round pot. Yeah. So here's a primitive pot, a round rustic pot uh, by that was done by John Pitt. You wouldn't ordinarily use it for a tree like this. It's more of a coniferous tree pot, something with some dead wood something quite gnarly, and it's a more unrefined pot. So is this for a more gnarly, masculine tree with some dead wood? Whereas this, I think, is quite a feminine, curvy tree with the colour and the movement in the trunk. Well, it's a good size pot, so I thought we'll try it in, because some of you might like it in there. Having tried that in there, that doesn't look as bad as I thought it would in that. I'm not saying it's a lovely part. I didn't think it would suit the tree, but it doesn't, it's not too bad. So if you like this sort of thing, that is, that is potentially an option. So let's lift it out. Let's try another round one, Paul. That, um, 
that round one with the rivets on it. So here we've got another round. Now this is a more feminine pot because it's quite a curvy pot with the rivets around the edge, but unglazed. Obviously the tree can come up in that pot a little bit. This profile's nice, but to me, the visual weight of this pot is too dense, too heavy for the thickness of trunk. This pot needs a much more thicker trunk tree. So let's go to another round one, bring that one in for. This is a handmade pot by Walsall Studio Ceramics. It's the same sort of size, a little bit shallower. So can you see that is more suitable than this? I would say. Then let's see what else we've got. This sort of lotus shape. I'm not sure if the tree will actually could physically fit into this pot with this root wall. No, it can't. So let's pick that one out of the way. So this is potentially suitable. Let me just if I put the tree behind the pot, I'll put the tree down like that. Push it back a little bit, put the pot down like that, and if we have a lower camera angle, so you can imagine it in that pot. The colour's really nice, the shape's nice, not too heavy, not too shallow. Again, that could be a contender. If you've got trees of your own and you're matching them to pots, you know, we're lucky that I own a bonsai nursery, we've got, got hundreds of pots. You're always better to take your tree along to your local bonsai nursery so that they can they can do this process there. We don't mind people bringing trees up. We try them in several pots during the day. Here's another sort of lotus design. Bit of a long pot. It's quite broad. This movement picks up the movement in the in the trunk quite well. And although it's quite a broad pot, there's quite a lot of length here. That one before we started off was like an 18 inch pot. This one's 23 inch across. So it's like 59 centimeters across. But potentially it's suitable. It's a very lively pot that you can't use for lots, lots of trees but it does suit this design, that's a potential. And then what else have we got? That next one there, Paul, on the corner. Bring that one over. So while we're looking at sort of these sort of um, lotus design pots, we've got this one here, this shape, it's very nice, beautiful glaze. Let's try it in this. This could be a favorite. It's not too deep compared to this oval look. It's not as deep as this oval, but it's certainly also less clunky. It's got a rounded lip on it. This has got a square lip, which makes it look a bit heavier. And it is, it is a bit heavier to be fair. So that's a potential. So then we've tried a few round pots, a few hexagonal pots. Now some of you, when I put this on Facebook, obviously you notice that when my father designed this tree, it was in a rectangular pot. And this one here is quite similar to the pot on that original photograph. And again, I'm not sure, I can't really rest the tree in that for the dimensions. So we pop the tree at the back of it with a low camera angle you should be able to see clearer than me what it looks like this is very very similar so with this tree having a bit of history potentially it'd be nice to put it into a pot like it started its journey off in so that that is a that, that could be a potential pot and then we've got a couple more so a few more rectangles, this glazed rectangle here, 
because you'll be able to settle the tree into that. Obviously it's going to sit lower down in the pot. So for, the, for those of you that liked it in a rectangle, that's quite a sensible design. But we've also got it in a, in a green. So potentially, if you like this pot, you might find the glaze a bit too busy, a bit too lively. If you want something more subdued, then that's the same pot, but with a green graduated glaze. So we've done some round pots, some ovals, some hexagonal, some rectangular pots, some lotus design pots. Finally, we've got a just nice oval. Again, quite a lively glaze. A lot of trees won't suit it, but this, this could carry this glaze off. So like I said before, with all these pots, we've probably tried near on 15 pots. Uh, tried this tree in quite a few pots. I'm going to have to make my mind up soon because some of these pots will get sold. I can't just keep 15 pots and make my mind up next March. Going back through the ones we've looked at, pop this rectangle one out of the way for a minute. If I had to choose, well, one more thing before I choose. I've got this tree here. It's a big Satsuki, a Corin Satsuki Azalea of mine. And this pot was made for it by Walsall Studio Ceramics. Now, a couple of things. This pot could be a suitable pot for this maple. Although now the side by side, I've measured it up. I think the diameter of this is a bit small. But I've had another thought. Here's a photograph of this tree when it's in full flower. And when it's in full flower, that's the time of year I display and exhibit this tree. So for those of you that, like myself, really liked this pot, but you perhaps thought, you perhaps think it's a bit too showy for that maple, how about using it for a bright pink flowering azalea? I'm determined to use this pot for something, a tree in my collection. And this, the difference of these two trees in this pot, of course, this has got a really good root spread, quite wide, very heavy trunk. When it's in bright pink flower, it, it, will, it, will, it can take the, the garishness of this pot. This is pot so lively and flamboyant, this tree will, will look good in it. But also, with a bit, uh, an azalea like this is evergreen. If we were to put the maple into this pot, in winter this pot would hugely overpower it. But this tree, in winter, could cope with this pot. So potentially, you might be seeing this tree in this pot in future. I think if this pot was shallower, we'd be seeing this tree in this pot. At the moment, I quite like quite like it in this hexagonal pot. I quite like this oval that we've just taken it out of. I quite like this pot. So I've narrowed it down to, to four, I think. I've narrowed it down to this hexagonal one, this beautiful Lotus design pot. And then over here, the blue one, which is an easy choice because it's the size of, in the same style as the pot it was in before. And then potentially this shallower oval. Like I say, more than welcome your comments uh, underneath this video, it could go on and on forever. I've got a few months to decide, but please let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out any future videos. When this tree does get potted in spring, we'll do a video of it and you'll get to see 
which pot I chose. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.